didn't he know that the butcher had specially selected them? All those who are sitting in the cages now will be the tastiest meals on the table. They should be glad to end up in the meat man's stomach. Hi. I am... Emma. This is an old story. My good old grandmother used to love to tell me when my parents would bring me to visit her on vacations. She lives in an old village, where only old people are left. And this monster lived there when my grandmother was a little girl. It certainly sounds like a scary tale, but my grandmother claimed that it was the truth. There was always a wicked moon hanging over the old house at night. In one window the light of a lamp was visible, a dirty room that was never ventilated. Dust was everywhere. Various body parts hung on rusty nails on the wall, arms, legs, heads, and even male genitals. On the shelves were jars of severed lips, noses, fingers, and clitoris. The smell of rottenness wafted into the walls of the room. At a dilapidated wooden table sat the butcher. He was examining the arsenal, cleavers, knives, saws. He liked to admire his kit before he got down to business, butchering meat. The screams of the victims never stopped. They all begged for help, to be let go, that they were not guilty of anything. But they didn't he know that the butcher had taken them away on purpose. All those now sitting in cages will be the tastiest meals on the table. There is no humiliation and no evil doom. They should be glad to end up in the butcher's stomach. The butcher got up from the table, and with slow, heavy steps he walked out of his room into a hall full of cages. With a blank stare he walked through each cage. Many hands reached out for him. The victims begged for mercy and release. Some even demanded that he let them go, and cried out the dire consequences for the butcher if he chose to kill them. Only a small fraction resigned themselves to their fate, simply huddled in a corner of the cage and waited for their fate. The butcher stretched out his hand, holding out a crooked finger, and proceeded to count. He often did this when he couldn't he make up his mind. Stuttering and struggling to pronounce the words, the butcher finished the counting. His finger stopped on a young blonde girl with a disconnected voice. The girl, in turn, tried to shout and shake her head, coaxing and begging. She could not accept the fact that she was going to be killed and eaten. And he was the butcher. The cage door opened. The girl tried to escape, but the butcher grabbed her hair tightly and pulled her toward him. The blonde girl fell, hitting her foot painfully against the bars of her cage. She kicked and fought back. But all these attempts had no effect. The butcher dragged her into the great hall, where he was engaged in butchering. Slapped her several times on the belly to keep the food from kicking. Picked her up, flipped her head down, and hung her on a hook. The point went perfectly into the anus, almost through. Blood trickled warmly, staining the girl's body scarlet. Pain filled her entire gut. Her screams grew louder. The tears did not stop flowing. Misery distorted the girl's face. The butcher returned to the room where he kept his range. He took a bag, put all the essentials in it. The blonde was already twitching in convulsions. One cut on her neck had finished her off. Now her face had turned scarlet. When the girl stopped showing signs of life, the butcher got down to business. Large chunks were taken from her thighs, her breasts along with them. The fleshier portions from the sides. The insides would be a bit tricky. Some of the bones could be used for crafts. Skin could be used for clothing. For gloves or a jacket. You just have to be careful to separate it from the flesh. Very carefully. The smell of fresh meat and blood filled the room. The cutting is done. Now we move on to cooking. Let the thighs and breasts roast. You can add some herbs and onions. The heart is cooked together with the tongue. 
a pinch of salt in the pot, and potatoes at the same time. The buttocks are an entertaining thing, you can roast them that way without cutting them up, or still in small pieces, seasoned with pepper and liver. Cooking is easier than carving. The whole night flew by without the butcher even noticing. It wasn't he until now, as he sat down at the table, that he looked at his watch. It was morning. So we could get down to breakfast. The butcher ate the food he had prepared with incredible appetite. Food always tastes better when you make it yourself. He had been convinced of that more than once, and this would be his last. There was already persistent knocking on the door, trying to break it down and shouting something. The butcher paid no attention to the policeman. He knew this moment would come someday. That someday an ordinary madman, who wouldn't he even hurt a fly, would become a monster to everyone. And he could butcher pigs like his father, grandfather, great-grandfather had done, but he wanted something new, namely, human meat. The butcher knew that at first no one would suspect him, but it dragged on for a year, then two, then five years. So he purposely made sure that he was noticed, caught, and severely punished. The Butcheress Subscribe to the channel to hear the scariest stories. Goodbye.